Hi everyone and welcome to this review note. In this clip we're going to repeat the subnetting example of the fourth octet from the previous video, but we're going to make the math a lot easier. Our first step is to determine what is the maximum number of networks that we need and what's the largest network. In other words, what's the maximum number of hosts on any one of the networks. In our example here, we have a branch office. We're going to break our branch office up into three networks. We're going to have a Wi-Fi network for our guest access. We're going to have a network that has our in-house resources, our servers on it. And we're going to have another network which has our staff workstations. So three networks in total. And the largest one is going to have to handle 22 hosts. Our assigned network is this one. That's what we're going to have to start working with. Our next step, how many of the host bits are we going to have to borrow for our subnets? In other words, we've got with a class C address, these eight bits for hosts. We need to figure out how many of those we're going to take and turn them into network bits in order to be able to satisfy our requirement for three subnets. So we've said that we need three subnets. Fair enough. What we need to do is figure out what binary power can we use to give us at least three. We start off and use one bit. We take two raised to the power of one, which gives us two. Obviously, that's not going to work. We've got one bit. It can only have two possible values, zero and one. That's going to tell us how many subnets we need, and therefore, we're going to be limited to two. That's not enough to give us the three that we need. So that's not going to work. The other hand, if we use two, we take two raised to the power of two and gives us four. That's the maximum possible number of subnets that we need. That's greater than equal to the three that we need. Therefore, that's going to work for us. And the math is pretty easy too. All you have to do is remember how to multiply by two. So now the question is, how many host bits do we have left? If we start with our 32, we take the 24 that are the assigned network, we take out the two that we've borrowed, and that leaves us with six. So with those six, do we have enough left over that we can support the largest network based on number of hosts? Well, that's pretty easy to figure out as well. We take two raised to the power of six, the number of bits that we have for a host, that gives us 64. We have to subtract two, because remember that if we use all zeros, then that's going to represent, as the host bits, that's going to represent network. If we use all ones as the host address, that's going to represent our broadcast. That leaves us with 62, which is greater than the 22 that we need. So that's going to work out just fine. Now the question is, can we get away with using any less than six? And it turns out if we use five, then we end up with 30 valid host address to the power of five, which is 32 less two. So what do we have left over? Well, we start off with 32. Again, we subtract the 24 network bits that we have is from our assigned address. We subtract the two subnet bits. We subtract the five host bits that we need in order to meet the largest network. And we got one left over, but we can't leave the one. We have to use it for something. So now we have to decide how we're going to use that. Normally, we make that decision based on our ability to scale the network. Right now, we're going to use three of the possible four subnets so we can add one more network. We're also going to use up to 22 of the 30 valid hosts so we can add eight more hosts. Normally, the plans of the business will tell us, do we need to use that extra bit so that we can have more networks or we can have bigger networks? For us, we're going to keep it with the four subnets, and that's how we're going to work our way forward. To determine the subnet mask and generate the network map using easier math, we need something called the block size. A lot of people call this the magic number. The block size is pretty simple. It's simply the difference between uh, network values in the subnet at octet. There are several ways to find the block size, but the one that I find the easiest is to take the maximum number of subnets that we can have based on those two borrowed host bits, divide that into 256, and we come up with the block size. So in our case, our block size is going to be 64. So let's start putting that magic number to work. First thing we have to do is figure out our subnet mask. 
If we look right now, we know from before, since we have an assigned address that is 24 bits, our first three octets are all going to have bits of value 1 in our subnet mask, so three 255s. Again, it's our fourth octet here. We have to figure out what we're going to do. This is actually really easy when we have the block size. We know that our block size is 64. If I subtract that from 256, I get 192, which is the value of that octet for the subnet mask. And hence, here's our subnet mask. Pretty simple, right? And of course, we need our CIDR value. Well, the CIDR value is just our number of network bits that we get from our side network, plus whatever subnet bits that we've borrowed. We know that's two, and that gives us 26 as our CIDR value. On to our network map. Now we know what our subnetted value is going to be. So it's the same as our original network, but slash 26 instead of slash 24. We know our subnet mask. We know our CIDR value. We know we have four subnets. For each one of those subnets, we need the subnet address, we need the broadcast address, and we need the range of valid host addresses. So let's get started with that. First thing I'm going to do is generate the network addresses. We know that nothing left of the subnetted octet is going to change. So we know that our subnet addresses are all going to start with 192.168.22. Our subnetted octet always starts with zero, hence giving us our first subnet address. Now we simply add the block size to the subnetted address and we get our next subnet address. And we continue doing that until all of our subnets are defined. In this case, we have four subnets. These are their subnet addresses. Start at zero, add 64, which is the block, add 64, add 64, and we've got all of our subnet addresses now defined. Next thing we have to look at is going to be broadcast. Remember, broadcast is always the last address in the network. Easiest thing to do with that, if I'm looking for the broadcast address for this network, I take my next subnet and subtract 1, giving me 63. 64 subtract 1. And then I do the same thing for each of the rest of these going with the next network and subtracting one. Now in the case of the last one, if I add 64 to 192, I come up with 256, which of course is invalid. However, 256 subtract one, 255. Easy, right? Next thing we have to look at is our first host address in each one of the subnets. Again, really, really easy. The host address is going to be the network address plus one. If I look at my first subnet, subnet at octet is zero, add one to that, it's one. And we see that same relationship for each of the next three subnets. And then we have to come up with the last valid host address in each one of our subnets. In this case, we're going to look at the fact that the last host address is going to be one less than the broadcast. So in this subnet, my broadcast is 63, subtract 1, 62, and again, the relationships all the way through are going to be exactly the same. Now we're going to look at a few sanity checks to make sure that you're going to um, have no problem making sure that you're doing things correctly. So the first thing we're going to look at, if you are subnetting an octet that is not on the octet boundary, then your block size is always going to be an even number. So the last octet is going to be always an even number. Pretty simple. Also, we know that the broadcast address is going to be one less than a network address. Since the network address is an even number and there's a difference of one, that means broadcast wise, everything is going to have to be an odd number. And the last one is always going to be 255. Same thing with host addresses. Again, they have a difference of one from the network address. Therefore, they're going to be all odd numbers. And finally, when we look at the last host address, because of the fact it is two less than the next network address, we know that it's going to be an even number because the networks are even numbers. So these guys will all be even. And the last one is always going to be 
255. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy when it comes to setting that up as compared to doing it with a binary method. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.